production. CBS Sports presents the NCAA Tournament Selection Show, sponsored by Pizza Hut and their new MVP four-topping pizza. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Nance in New York, along with Billy Packer and Mike Francesa. We are moments away from learning which 64 teams will embark upon the road to the Final Four and what paths they will have to take. But before we head out to Kansas City for the live announcement of the tournament pairings, let's quickly update you on two conference championships that just concluded about a half hour ago. First in the Southwest Conference, the Razorbacks of Arkansas ripped off a 19-2 run to start the second half and win the SWC championship and revenge over Texas, who had beaten them a week ago. Alabama beats Tennessee, preventing the Volunteers with 21 losses making the field. The Volunteers would have set the all-time record in losses making the field, and they won that game today. All right, without much further ado, let's go out to Kansas City, where Greg Gumbel is there to take the honors away from us. Greg, do it to us, please. All right, Jim, thank you, and uh, welcome to Kansas City, everyone, where uh, it's been the hub of basketball activity for the last couple of days, and uh, as Jim Nance says, without further ado, let's first tell you about the four number one seeds in the tournament. Here they are. North Carolina is the number one seed in the East region. Arkansas, the number one in the Southeast. In the Midwest, it's the Buckeyes of Ohio State, and in the West, it's top-ranked and unbeaten UNLV. So those are the top teams. Now here's how the bracket looks, and we will begin in the East with third. Thursday games first at College Park, Maryland. The number six seed Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Great job that Les Robinson has done in his first season out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. They'll match up against the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi, making their second straight appearance. The third seed, Oklahoma State Cowboys. Coach Eddie Sutton becomes the first coach to take four different schools to the tournament. The Cowboys will meet the Lobos of New Mexico in with a 20 and nine mark out of the whack. Coach Gene Cady's Purdue Boilermakers are the number seven seed in the East, making their eighth appearance in the last nine years, and they'll take on the Temple Owls at 22 and 10 out of the Atlantic 10. Number two seed in the East, Syracuse, the Orange Men, winning their first ever outright regular season Big East Conference, making their eighth straight appearance in the NCAA, will play the Richmond Spiders, the tournament champions in the Colonial Athletic Association. Now, Friday games in Syracuse, New York. Top seed, North Carolina, the Tar Heels, winning, the, uh, winning today over Duke at 25-5 and five on the year. They'll take on number 16, Northeastern, the Huskies regular season and tournament champions in the North Atlantic Conference. Eighth-seeded Princeton, the Tigers, undefeated in an Ivy League play this year, take on the Wildcats of Villanova out of the Big East. Fifth-seeded in the East, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. The last two seasons, they finished eighth in the SEC. Coach Richard Williams turns them around to a 20 and eight mark this year, and they'll take on the Hurons of Eastern Michigan, the Mid-American Conference regular season and tournament champions. The Bruins of UCLA pull in the number four seed in the East out of the Pac-10, and they'll take on Penn State, the Nittany Lions, the Atlantic 10 Conference tournament champions, their last year in the Atlantic 10 before they move on to the Big 10. Now. The winner out of the East will take on the winner of the Southeast at the Final Four, and these are Thursday games in Louisville, Kentucky. The Big East sends the Pitt Panthers in as the number six seed, and they'll face the Bulldogs of Georgia out of the SEC Hugh Durham squad, 17 and 12 on the year. The number three seed, the Jayhawks of Kansas. They won this tournament, you'll recall, in 1988. They'll play the privateers of the University of New Orleans, who enjoyed a 17-game winning streak this season in the American South Conference. The Florida State Seminoles, the tournament champions in the Metro, the number seven seed taking on 10th seeded Southern Cal and George Raveling. It's his third team to go to the tournament in addition to Washington State and Iowa. And Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers, the number two seed in the Southeast, making their 20th appearance. They'll play Coastal Carolina champions in the Big South Conference and then beat Jackson State in one of the NCAA's play-in games. Now, continuing on in the Southeast in Atlanta, these are Friday and Sunday games. Number one seed, Arkansas. The Razorbacks will play the Panthers of Georgia State, the tournament champions out of the Transamerica Conference and making their first NCAA appearance. Eighth seed, Arizona State. The Sun Devils enjoying a winning season for the first time since the 82-83 season. They'll play Rutgers, the regular season champions in the Atlantic 10. The Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, the number five seed, making their first appearance since 1984. They'll play American South tournament champion Louisiana Tech. Alabama's Crimson Tide, SEC tournament champions, Coach Wimp Sanderson brings them in against the racers of Murray State, four-time defending champs out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Now remember, it'll be the East, 
against the Southeast in the uh, Final Four, and that's half the bracket. We'll take a time out here, and when we come back to Kansas City, we'll bring you up to date on how it looks in the other two regions, and we continue in just a moment. Bring home the ball, Darryl. Well, it's all come down to this. 60 million trillion fans are waiting for this one last play. You know what's going to Dow Jenkins. He moves left, he moves right, he's double teamed, triple teamed, the whole team team. Whoa! Now, the only thing between him and the basket is his big, ugly brother, Wesley. He gives him the old shake and bake. His mom and dad are jumping up and down. Boy, is his brother jealous. He looks at the clock. Four seconds, three, two, he leaps, he shoots, He was fouled! He was fouled! For all of you who ever dreamed of playing big-time basketball, Pizza Hut and the NCAA would like to say thanks for making it great. The NCAA Tournament. 64 teams, one title. Get in on the madness before it begins. With a special 24-page pull-out section. Only in the National Sports Daily, tomorrow. When you're on the business and your customer needs something fast, you do it. Apis is the only major rent-a-car company owned by its employees. And they're trying harder with a computerized return system to get you on your way faster. Avis, we're trying harder than ever. Welcome back to Kansas City, everyone, as we continue now with the remainder of the draw for the men's basketball tournament for 1991. These are the Midwest and the West regions, and we'll begin with Midwest play Thursday in Minneapolis. And sixth seeded, the LSU Tigers, making their eighth straight appearance out of the SEC. And Coach Dale Brown will take on Coach Jim Calhoun and the Connecticut Huskies, who finished strong in the Big East regular season play. Danny Nee and the Nebraska Cornhuskers pull down the number three seed out of the Big Eight, and they'll play the Musketeers of Xavier. Pete Gillen, sixth year at the school. He's gone to the tournament each year. This year, he's got a record of 21 and 9. Out of the Big Ten, the Iowa Hawkeyes with a 20 and 10 mark will take on the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State, who won their third straight Southern Conference Tournament. 28 victories this season, a new school record. Coach Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils, the number two seed in the Midwest. Regular season, Atlantic Coast Conference champions, Final Four team for the last five years. They'll play the Indians of Northeast Louisiana, Southland Conference regular season and tournament champions and winners of the play-in game against Florida A&M. Now, Friday games in Dayton, Ohio, in the Midwest, top-seeded Ohio State, the Buckeyes, Big Ten Conference champions, taking on the Tigers of Towson State, the East Coast Conference champions, both regular season and the postseason tournament. Georgia Tech is the number eight seed. Making their seventh straight appearance in the NCAA, they'll take on the only independent school in the draw this year, the Blue Demons of DePaul, making their 19th appearance, their 20-8 overall on the season. Fifth seed, the Texas Longhorns, enjoying a 20-win season for the third straight year, and they'll play the Peacocks of St. Peter's, who won the Metro Atlantic Conference Tournament and draw their first NCAA bid in 60 years of basketball. Fourth seed, St. John's, the Red Men, out of the Big East Conference with a 27th straight trip to a postseason tournament. They'll play the Huskies of Northern Illinois at 27-5 on the year and the regular season champions in the mid-continent. Now, Thursday games in the West. We'll go first to Salt Lake City, where sixth seed New Mexico State Aggies, 23-5 on the year, a third straight 20-plus win season. They'll face the Blue Jays of Creighton, Missouri Valley Conference regular season and tournament champions, and winners of 15 of their last 16 games coming down the stretch. The Pirates of Seton Hall, the Big East Conference tournament champions, draw the third seed, 22-8 on the year, and they'll play Pepperdine, the West Coast Conference regular season and tournament champs there. They enjoyed a 16-game winning streak during the season. The seventh seed in the West, the Cavaliers of Virginia. Out of the ACC, they'll play the BYU Cougars, the WAC tournament champions, and uh, they have to play on Thursday, Saturday site. They can't play on Sunday. That Mormon religion prohibits that. Number two seed in the West, the Wildcats of Arizona. Out of the Pac-10, regular season champions there. Lute Olson, eight years at Arizona, seven tournament appearances. They'll play the Red Flash of St. Francis, Pennsylvania. 24-7, and seven, regular season tournament champs in the Northeast Conference, and another play-in winner. Now, in the West, 
on Friday. These games will be played in Tucson, Arizona, and they'll feature the top-seeded running Rebels of Nevada, Las Vegas, Big West Conference Tournament champions unbeaten in 29 games. And they'll play the Grizzlies of Montana, the tournament champions out of the Big Sky Conference, 23-7 and on the year. The Georgetown Hoyas, questions are whether or not they would have gotten in this year. A strong showing in the Big East Tournament. They are the number eight seed in the West, making their 13th straight tournament appearance. And they'll play the Commodores of Vanderbilt out of the SEC. The fifth seed, Michigan State Spartans out of the Big Ten. And the Wisconsin Green Bay, the Fighting Phoenix, 24-6 and six on the year. And the tournament champions in the Mid-Continent making their first tournament appearance. The running Utes of Utah out of the WAC, the regular season champions there. They set a school mark with 28 victories this season. And they'll take on the Jaguars of South Alabama, regular season and tournament champions in the Sun Belt Conference. They sport a record of 22-8. and eight. Now, you want to look at the teams that, uh, or the conferences that showed up with the best teams and the most teams in the tournament. Here's a breakdown. The Big East Conference showed seven teams in the tournament so far. Seven teams, the ACC with six, the Southeastern Conference with five, and the Big Ten and the Pac-10 with four. The Big Eight Conference has three teams in, and as we said, one independent team, and that is DePaul University. Those teams considered to have been on the bubble and are not included in the 64-team draw include Providence, Houston, Fordham, Alabama, Birmingham, the Bearcats of Cincinnati, and the Explorers of LaSalle, who finished with a 20 and 10 mark. Plenty of questions. Well, we'll uh, hand them over to Jim Delaney, who heads up the men's basketball committee and who's been hard at work the last couple of days to come up with this tournament situation. We'll also have some questions back in New York as well. So uh, right now, let's turn it back to Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Mike Francesa. Guys? All right, Greg, thank you very much. And folks, did you see it? That potential second round game, Georgetown against UNLV on the second round Sunday. Wow. All right, let's put it in perspective for you. The West and the Midwest are on the same side of the bracket. That'll be your semifinal matchup at the Final Four. On the other side, it's uh, East against Southeast. We'll come back, get the viewpoints from Coach Packer and Coach Francesa as we continue on the road to the Final Four on CBS in just a moment. Pizza Hut for the new MVP pizza. Loaded with pepperoni, mushrooms, Italian sausage, and green peppers. Get one for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more. Now that you're delivered, gonna change the something you've never seen before in an inexpensive Macintosh. Color. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate, more than any Tums tablet, and salt-free. More calcium carbonate and salt-free. This settles it once and for all. All right, welcome back on CBS. Again, the one seeds, Billy, UNLV, Ohio State, Arkansas, and North Carolina. Let's quickly take it right back to Kansas City. And our man there, Greg Gumbel. Take it away, Greg. All right, thank you, Jim. And uh, joining me is Jim Delaney, who uh, headed up the uh, men's basketball committee and uh, came up with the 64 teams that are now in the tournament. All kinds of questions, Jim. Uh, first of all, let me ask you about Ohio State, a number one seed, uh, despite having lost its last two games down the stretch. Uh, your thoughts and the committee's thoughts on that? Well, in general, I think line one and two, with the exception of UNLV, were considered to be very close. And uh, in, uh, Ohio State was uh, under a lot of uh, a lot of review because they had lost their last two 
championship games, but to quality opponents and, and on the road. But I think there was a general sense uh, that they had accomplished a great deal during the months of January and February, were in everybody's two, three, or four positions throughout the season, and that uh, that the main uh, the main uh, competition was coming from Indiana. And the fact that they had beaten Indiana head-to-head -head on two occasions once as recently as about two and a half weeks ago, really in the final analysis, although although I think the committee recognizes that in, in the areas two through seven or two through eight, there was a, there was a great deal of parity. Okay, let's uh, check back with Jim Nance. Jim? All right, uh, Jim, a skeptic would say that the NCAA would like to, so to speak, stack the deck against UNLV. Here in New York, we're all in agreement that the West is by far the most difficult bracket. Is it balanced against UNLV? Well, I, I would say this. I think, uh, you know, uh, we, we asked Gary Cunningham, who was a coach at uh, UCLA and a number of other people who've had a lot of basketball experience, to try to judge where they wanted to go. And, and we, our sense was overall, uh, all four uh, regions are particularly tough. I think what makes the West particularly tough is the fact that UNLV is in it. So uh, UNLV has uh, been head and shoulders uh, uh, above the competition the last year. They've been head and shoulders above the competition this year. And I think that if you pulled UNLV out of that and put them in any of the other three regions, they would be considered to be the strongest of the four regions. So I really think it's the presence of UNLV that makes that region appear tougher than the other four. Jim, one of the things that, uh, that I noticed right away is the power conferences roughly got 70% of all of the at-large selections. And, and what I, I would be concerned about if I was one of the fellows in the smaller league, and let's take the Patriot League as an example, and you've got a Fordham. They end their season 24-7. and seven. They have wins over Xavier, Dayton, Seton Hall, Vandy. They also played St. John's and St. Francis, teams that will be in the NCAA tournament. Four and two record against those clubs, and they're not in the hunt. Uh, my question would be, what is the future for these smaller leagues and some of these teams that just can't either get those type of power schedules or certainly aren't going to have that opportunity for the exposure? Well, I, I, think, your, I think your point is a valid point. Uh, I guess I would uh, counter with the fact that uh, Northern Illinois is a mid-major and, and has made a, a showing in the tournament, that University of New Orleans is not considered to be from a major conference, and they made it in as an at-large. I would look at East Tennessee with a high seed. I would look at Princeton with a high seed. I will, uh, I will say that there are some scheduling advantages that go to those who are in more established conferences. But at the same time, I think you can make an argument that this field, notwithstanding the fact that there's strong representation from the major conferences, has played very well to the mid-major both in seating and in the selection process. Jim, you mentioned Northern Illinois and New Orleans. Now, Fordham had better quality wins at a conference than those two. What put those two over the top instead of, say, a Fordham? Well, I think that's the conclusion that you've reached. I think the committee took a look at the schools that were on the bubble and concluded that both Northern Illinois and uh, New Orleans uh, merited selection on an at-large basis. And I think that reasonable people will, reasonable people do differ on, uh, on giving certain values to certain wins. But uh, my sense is that uh, this committee process, probably uh, because of a number of ineligible teams and because of uh, a lack of power in certain conferences this year as compared with last, uh, played very well both in the seating and the selection to the mid-major. All right, Jim Delaney, thank you very much. And uh, Greg Gumbel, thank you for a job well done from Kansas City. And when we come back on the road to the Final Four, we're going to go right back through the brackets again. Mike and Billy will talk about it as we continue here on CBS right after this. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. For more than 215 years, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps have responded to the challenges that have faced our nation. Challenges that required courage and determination. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. Now you can get an NCAA mini basketball from Pizza Hut for $2.99 with any pizza purchase. But hurry, they're moving fast. The 1991 NCAA mini basketball for just $2.99 at Pizza Hut. When you own your own business, you sweat every detail. Avis is the only major rent-a-car company owned by its employees. And they're trying harder with a 49-step quality control program to give you a well-maintained car. Avis, we're trying harder than ever. Wouldn't it be great if instead of being in hot water with your boss, you were in warm water, the Caribbean? And swimming toward you was a beautiful fish. No, it was a woman. And yes, she had beer, Keystone. 
the premium gold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. And wouldn't it be great if you told your boss to take that job and sure, I'll have another. <laughs> Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer tastes in a can. Wouldn't that be great? All right, a chance to secure your own brackets at home, and let's start out. Uh, Billy and Mike first in the east at College Park, Maryland. This is a Thursday-Saturday combination. North Carolina State against Southern Mississippi, Oak State, New Mexico, Purdue Temple, Syracuse, Richmond. What do you think? I think Syracuse got a tough game. Anytime you go up against that Richmond club, that's no fun in the first round. It's close to home for Richmond, Billy. I would agree to that also. It'll be interesting to see if this Gene Cady team of Purdue can continue to roll. They've played very well here at, uh, of late. Southern Mississippi is a team really slipping. I like that team early in the season, but what's happened to them? I, I really can't speak for them, but anytime you play in the NCAA tournament against a team that has guard play like NC State has, they'll have to play, be at the best uh, in order to come out on top. Corciano, Corciani and Monroe for North Carolina State will challenge Southern Mississippi. All right, let's go to the other side in the east. This is Syracuse, and uh, at that site, North Carolina and Northeastern, Princeton Villanova. What a game that is. Great Miss first round mm -hmm. game. And anybody that questions uh, Princeton at all in the Ivy League, I think that this is a club that uh, deserves their seating at number eight and is a very talented team. Villanova will have their hands full in that game. A little bit of rivalry close to home there. Let's move the uh, Bruins. Let's just move the whole campus to the east, all right? They were in the east last year. Yep. Is UCLA coming east again? A very good shooting basketball team. Penn State uh, uh, surprised me a little bit the way they played in their tournament, but uh, UCLA is a club with an awful lot of offensive power. All right, in the southeast, this is in Louisville, Kentucky, and again, a Thursday, a Saturday combination for these games. Uh, the Pitt team, the enigmatic team from Pittsburgh against Georgia. How do you see that one, Mike? I think that's two enigmatic teams. I, I think that Pitt hasn't played well. They have underachieved. I think Georgia at many times this year is underachieved, so who knows what happens there. I'll tell you a surprising one out of that bunch. I know. Coastal Here he goes. <laughs> right. He I'm loves gonna, this I'm game. Speak, but I tell you, Bob Knight, of course, has had some problems in opening round games. Yeah. As, he, as we can remember, Coastal Carolina will be a team that Indiana will have to look out for. George Raveling got his bid for the Trojans, Mike. Yeah, and they, they came on in the Pac-10, got four. and Mike Florida State. that is a football game. That is a heck of a football game, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Bobby Bowden and Larry Smith. <laughs> okay, in the southeast in Atlanta, Friday and uh, Sunday combination, Arkansas. The 8-9 game there is Arizona State Rutgers, maybe uh, nationally the least appealing of the 8-9 games, which have some terrific matchups in this tournament. I think a big key and, and an emerging story is that the 8-10 got three teams, got Rutgers in along with Temple, which was a point this week of uh, some controversy. And how does Wake get a five seed? I don't know. You know, the Wake-Virginia thing is interesting. Virginia with a seven, Wake with a five. Uh, Wake Forest, though, playing extremely well in the, from February on. And, you know, Murray State, Mike, you That's and I a have, good team. We have followed them. But Alabama is coming on, too. Alabama coming on strong. That'll be an interesting basketball game right there. Four and 13, pretty big disparagement yep. between two clubs that might be fairly evenly matched. All right, let's switch now to the uh, other side of the bracket. And this now is in the Midwest from uh, Minneapolis, a Thursday-Saturday combination. LSU. Connecticut. How about that one, Billy? Well, the key to me in, in that particular matchup is Shaquille O'Neal in the tournament, or isn't he? Dale Brown, of course, when asked, and I know, know that injuries played a part in the seating, said, oh, yeah, he'll play. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, what would Dale say? I certainly hope he can play because that makes him, obviously, a much different club. And I think the Midwest is, is the weakest of the four regions, and you have Duke there, of course, and Nebraska's played well, but I, I agree, Billy. Surprising that, that Connecticut's an 11 seed to me, too. Yeah, and especially with uh, Villanova being a 9 seed, some would have felt Villanova would be the last team from the Big East to I agree. make the field. I agree. All right, elsewhere in the Midwest, this is Dayton, Ohio. Ohio State's the one seed, shaping up for a round two game against Georgia Tech or DePaul. I like that game, Billy. Georgia Tech-DePaul will be an interesting game. Uh, DePaul with maybe more depth in that game. Uh, some excellent guard play expected. At Georgia Tech has really been reeling. Those two wins they had against Arizona and Virginia on the road were surprising even to Bobby Crimmins, and they have not played well in the last couple of weeks of the and season. And I think DePaul has really come down the stretch playing very well. Mike, did the committee ignore the Texas terrible loss today to Arkansas and give them a five seed? I think they did pretty much. I mean, I, I, you know, I thought they would be could be a five, anywhere from four to six. They were a five seed. Tommy Pendens Club will try to push it a little bit against the St. Peter's team that thinks defense first and wants to tempo the game. They try to keep you under 60 points. And Louie, you're headed to Dayton, Ohio to take on Northern Illinois. Let's Louis move. will have to find out who Northern Illinois is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the West and uh, take a look at this bunch. First, uh, the Salt Lake City site for Thursday and Saturday. New Mexico State, that was a six-seeded team last year in the West. New Mexico State and Creighton's a team you both have been telling me about all week. 
Well, I like the way that they play, but I also like the way New Mexico State plays, and I, I think their athleticism would be superior, but Creighton's inside game is fun to watch. This Seton Hall team, of course, and is... And they got is some a, break, didn't they? Yes, they did. They win the Big East, they go to the West. Yeah, but remember, they came out of the West when they went to the Final Four in 89. Correct. Right? And as a matter of fact, they beat UNLV also. Virginia and BYU, and you look at Arizona, it could be the Tucson skyline at BYU knocks off Virginia against Sean Bradley. Talk about a big game in round two. But I don't think there's any question, even when you look at that, that bracket right there, the fact that the West is loaded. And especially in, in the five through eight, Michigan State, New Mexico State, Virginia, Georgetown really makes it strong. I agree. It extends beyond just UNLV, which is at Tucson playing Montana in round one. And how about Georgetown? <laughs> Vanderbilt, <laughs> folks, next Sunday uh, it could be Georgetown, UNLV. You're writing Vandy right off, what huh? Oh, hey. yeah. <laughs> no, wait, I, I wouldn't. I'll tell you a contrast because Vandy plays out on the perimeter. Shoot They're the going to shoot those threes and, and maybe be able to take advantage of that big guy's inside. How long, though, have we been talking about possibly Georgetown? getting a shot at UNLV in the second round, and it does unfold that way. And, Mike, you say South Alabama will give Utah fits. I think Utah might go out in the first round. All right, we'll come back with some final thoughts. The 64 teams are set, and we'll continue on the road to Indianapolis here on CBS in just a moment. It has all come so far. Today, our engineers can crash test cars on a computer. If only they could have seen us 40 years ago. We had no idea we were inventing safety science. Most people today know nothing of all this safety pioneering, but I think Mercedes drivers, they know. I think they can feel it. Why do fools fall in love? Why do opposites attract? Why do gentlemen prefer blondes? Why do women have all the answers? Why? Ask. Why? Dry. 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 Cold filtered for smooth draft taste. Dry brewed for no aftertaste. Because if true love's not the answer, true refreshment must be. During the Final Four, satisfy everyone with the new Pizza Hut MVP pizza with four of your favorite toppings. Pepperoni, Italian sausage, mushrooms, and green peppers. Get one for $7.99 and a second for just $4 more in delivery and carry out only. Pizza Hut, make it great. The NCAA Tournament. 64 teams, one title. Get in on the madness before it begins. With a special 24-page pullout section. Only in the National Sports Daily, tomorrow. Well, we're all unanimous in terms of difficulty of brackets. Issue. <laughs> yeah, on one issue. Mike, run them down. Toughest first. West, southeast, east, midwest. All right. We sure. agree, Billy? We agree on that issue. All right. I'm with you. Coming up, 65 hours of coverage, 64 teams. It takes 63 games to determine your next national champion. We'll have it all for you from tip to trophy. We'll have your ticket to the final four right here on CBS. We'll have our first round coverage for you on Thursday and Friday, beginning at noon Eastern time. And March Madness goes prime time on Thursday and Friday evening, starting at 8 o'clock. For myself, Billy Packer, and Mike Francesa, Greg Gumbel out in Kansas City, all of us here at CBS Sports, we hope you'll stay with us every step of the way on the road to the final four. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Tournament Selection Show has been sponsored by Pizza Hut and their new MVP four-topping pizza.